Hello students, in today's lecture we will be studying about sampling. Before starting with sampling, there are two important definitions which we should be aware of. One is that of population and second is that of sample. So in statistics what we do is, we study the characteristics of a group of object. That brings us to the definition of first that is population. Population is an aggregate of objects animate or inanimate under study. It may be finite or infinite. As I said before, whatever group of object that you are studying or whose characteristics you are studying, they are called as a population. However, in real life, studying the entire population is actually impractical. I'll give you small examples regarding that. Uh, like if you want to measure the average income of all the people in the country. So what does that mean? You will have to go to each, uh, each person, ask for his uh, salary and make a note of it. And like you will have to go calculate the salary for each and every person of this country, which is actually impractical. Similarly, if you want to see the efficiency of or the quality of all the firecrackers produced, then you will have to test each firecracker and see whether it is functioning or not. That is again impractical. So instead of taking the entire population in consider consideration, what we do is we take a small sample out of that population and we carry out our study on that small, small sample. So coming to the definition of samples, a finite subset of statistical individuals in a population is called a sample. And the number of individuals in a sample is called as the sample size. Now, since you are not considering the entire population, but just considering a small sample of that population, this is going to lead to a small error. This error, which is called as a sampling error. But this sampling error is very small and doesn't affect the actual results. So we generally neglect this sampling error. So remember these two terms population and sample population is the entire uh, group of objects that you are studying but in actual practice you take a small sample out of that population and carry out your study on that sample. Now coming to the types of sampling the different types of sampling are purposive sampling random sampling simple sampling and stratified sampling. Students please remember this might form a viva question or an interview question where the examiner might ask you what are the different types of sampling okay so keep this in mind. Now always remember that a good sample is the one that is representative of the entire population and gives each unit an equal chance of being chosen. So that brings us to the first uh, sampling that is purposive sampling as the name suggests here participants are selected based on the purpose of the sample. Applicants who do not meet the profile are rejected. Let me give, an, give you an example for this like suppose if I want to uh, find out which is the most uh, famous bike in the country. So what I do is I select a number of people who already own a bike and take their views on the best bike. However, this sample won't give me the required result. Why? Because I have not selected the sample properly. I have selected only those people who have got bikes. However, people who don't have bikes, they can also give a suggestion for the best bike. So this sample is not meeting my requirement. So coming to the drawbacks of this sampling, firstly, it suffers from favoritism and nepotism. And secondly, it does not give a representative sample of the population. Now coming to random sampling, a random sample is one in which each unit of population has an equal chance of being included in it. For example, let us consider a population of 10 persons and we want to have a sample of 3 person that is sample size of 3. So what we do is we randomly select any 3 person without any bias and they form part of the sample. This is what is called as random sampling. Coming to next that is simple random sampling. A simple random sample is one in which each unit of population has an equal chance of being included in the sample. But how is this different from a random sampling is that this probability of selection which is there in simple random sampling is independent of the previous drawings. This is what it sets it different from normal random sampling. Okay, uh, remember this that a simple random sampling, the probability is independent of the previous drawing. Now, let me give you an example of simple random sampling. I have taken a population uh, of ten, uh, size 10, that is 10 persons, and I want to um, get a sample size of 3, that is of 3 persons, um, by using simple random sample. So, what I am basically going to do is I am going to make, uh, make 10 chits of paper and write names of all these 10 persons on each of the chits and then put them in a box or a hat and randomly choose any three chits from that box or the hat. Okay, and whosoever's name is there on that chit, that person will form part of my sample. 
दिस इज वॉट इज सिंपल रैंडम सैम्पलिंग नाउ कमिंग टू स्ट्रेटिफाइड सैम्पलिंग द सैंपल विच इज द एग्रीगेट ऑफ द सैंपल यूनिट्स ऑफ ईच ऑफ द स्ट्रेटम इज टर्म एज स्ट्रेटिफाइड सैंपल एंड द टेक्निक ऑफ ड्रॉइंग दिस सैंपल इज नोन एज स्ट्रेटिफाइड सैंपलिंग नाउ लेट मी एक्सप्लेन दिस बाई टेकिंग अ स्मॉल एग्जाम्पल लेट इज कंसिडर अ हेट्रोजेनियस पॉपुलेशन ऑफ साइज टेन यू कैन सी दैट दिस पॉपुलेशन कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू होमोजीनियस ग्रुप्स वन ऑफ कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ मेल्स एंड द सेकेंड ग्रुप कंसिस्टिंग ऑफ फीमेल्स so these two homogeneous group each of them is called as a stratum so what we do in stratified sampling is suppose we require a sample size of 4 so what we are going to basically do is we are going to implement simple random sampling on each of the stratum and take the sample size from each stratum and merge them together to get the final sample so we'll take two from the male stratum and two from the female stratum and combine them to get a sample size of 4 this is what is called as stratified sampling the stratified sampling is considered to be the best type of sampling because it gives a good representation from the entire population so that's it for today in the next lecture we'll discuss about parameter and statistics and sampling distribution thank you